Hello, my name is Jontan Geerts. I am uh, currently, well, I actually defended my thesis about uh, a week ago. So I'm uh, scheduled to graduate this semester, December 2015, and with a PhD. And I work at the Advanced Propulsion Research Laboratory, APRL, under the uh, guidance of Dr. Ken Yu. Uh, Jonathan was also a part of Hypersonic Center of Testing Excellence. Uh, it's a project, joint project between the University of Maryland and Hypervelocity Tunnel 9 at White Oak. Uh, the mission of the Hypersonic Center of Testing Excellence was to educate future leaders of hypersonic test and evaluation workforce uh, by placing the students right at the facility and have them work on their applied and basic research. For my research, I am interested in studying the isolated flow fields of a dual mode scramjet propulsion cycle, which is uh, next generation propulsion cycle, air breathing propulsion cycle that is capable of achieving hypersonic velocities in flight. And particularly what I'm interested in terms of isolator flow fields, isolator is of course one small subcomponent of the larger scramjet flow field, uh, but the isolator is a very important component because it's really the prime component that will mitigate the risk of inlet unstart, um, which of course uh, can result in mission failure or vehicle loss. And so it's very important for us to understand the flow fields within the isolator. Part of my research was to come up with a couple novel diagnostic techniques uh, to be able to look at the flow field from multiple perspectives uh, simultaneously and also time instantaneously. And so previously in the past literatures, for example, the Schlieren or Shadowgraph technique has been used to study these flow features, but these are line of sight techniques. So they basically present a two-dimensional projection of the flow field. So we can really look at the three-dimensional effects that we can expect in a rectangular isolator. Of to simulate the isolator flow field experimentally, I uh, used an atmospheric indraft wind tunnel, actually here on the University of Mount campus. So it's a simplified analog to a real isolator flow field, which of course would have a combustor downstream. I used a cold flow study. And so in essence, it was a relatively simple configuration, but it was a configuration in a wind tunnel that could be repeated uh, quite accurately. And it was also flexible in terms of changing the rectangular aspect ratio of the isolator and fixing the upstream or the inflow Mach number of the isolator flow field. I also had the opportunity to use a small calibration wind tunnel at the ADC Hypervelocity Wind Tunnel 9 facility in White Oak. Uh, this was a Mach 2.7 wind tunnel and it offered another uh, aspect ratio for me to study. And um, in addition to experimental work, I also did a secondary computational fluid dynamics study. Um, these were just using a commercial code, a star CCM commercial code doing steady uh, RAND simulations with K-Omega turbulence models. And so those were actually a very interesting project because it allowed me to step out of my comfort zone with experimental work and try something completely new, which were the uh, simulations and computational fluid dynamics studies, and found out that the commercially available RANDS packages actually very accurately predicted the trend of shock train front formation as the aspect ratio changes. And so if we assume two-dimensional shock train, then a lot of previous designs have just incorporated pressure measurements along the center line of the isolator as a traditional ways to locate the shock train leading edge due to the bound layer separation due to pressurize. But if we account for the three dimensionality, we can perhaps think about pressure surveys towards the low momentum regions, the outbound corners, the outboard regions of the duct, to capture the shock train arrival much earlier, which can result in more robust propulsion system controllers to control that shock train leading edge. So that's really a main, a main impact of the research as it can progress from laboratory to, to flight scale.